Hey, it's Herbert. Mm-hmm. And you're listening to the About Last Night podcast, you slippery little son of a bitch. <laughs> oh, it's comedy in your ears, which we all love. Mm-hmm. You're listening to the About Last Night podcast with my boy, uh, Adam Ray. You know what my voice sounds like, but you know. Um, yeah, no, it just had a. Uh, it definitely had an effect on it that I didn't care for. Um, <laughs> are we like are, are pan- we recording? Like a, like a pandemic effect, like a like a panic, like I don't know what's gonna happen tomorrow kind of effect, or like no. a true like vocal. No, like a distortion that. See, I just got in a karaoke machine, and so I'm. Uh, Trust me, just, I've seen it. I know. And I'm all really I can into do it, is- and there's all these effects you can put on your voice to sound legit great. And um, and if you have like an okay voice, like I have an okay voice, but I can sound like real good with some like echoiness, you know, because people sound good in music because it's like ten of their voices on top of each other, and people don't realize oh, yeah. that. Oh yeah, do you, wait. Is there like auto tune on this machine? Like how pro yeah. is it? Well, I, it's supposed to be that pro, but it's it's not. It just it just even an echoey effect will make you sound good. There is like a little bit of auto tune on it, but it's it's not the greatest machine. But I got it for free, so I can't complain. But I will not promote it. <laughs> <laughs> you know when you get something for free and you're like i appreciate it but this is not a good product so i'm not gonna like put the word out if you don't oh, mind yeah. thank wow. you for letting me try it <laughs> but wait wait now this is a waste of your money to invest in this and by the as, way, as a shark i have to be shrewd and i'll say i'll pass but you are at the level nikki to where like you post about using this thing or at least talking about it even negatively it's almost like being dismissive to someone and having them like you more because of that they're gonna be like oh she fucking hates us you know what 50 g's just for one song what 10 seconds of her singing and enjoying i know i should ask for that they really like but the thing is i don't believe in the product that's what i'm telling you i had to i had to so i got this karaoke (laughs) machine and it wasn't good enough so then my dad just like kept replacing pieces of it because it's not good but my dad has tons of equipment because he plays music and so eventually we just replaced the thing. We're not even using it. I'm just singing karaoke uh, with my dad's equipment in my living room every what? single day. Like it's therapy. Uh, yeah, it looked, it looked like it the first time I was like, oh, this looks like fun. And then like, as I continued to watch, I was like, oh, she's getting stuff out right now. Yeah, dude. Like, and is- it's so much more than I'm posting. Like I do it every day. I sing about eight songs a day and it's, oh it's no joke. That's I'm putting in the time. Well, let's be honest. Day- daytime karaoke isn't for people that are looking to come sing a song and get back to their day. It's like, this is, this is like an afternoon, you know, you're punching in, you're punching out, you're trying to beat your best. <sighs> It's I it it does feel like kind of a grind because I am um, an artist <laughs> and I do have to so get in there insanity. and I really have to focus because it does yeah. take focus if I'm really because if I'm gonna phone it in and I'm on my phone and just kind of dawdling around and singing oh. to it no I gotta be plugged into the lyrics I gotta get them right there is uh, there's a skill involved in karaoke you gotta try you gotta act like you are performing like when I really p- pretend I'm Taylor Swift and like have a moment where it's like just go big Nick like try as hard as you can your mom and dad are wa- walking the dogs you know you got at least 15 more minutes to yourself no one's ever gonna see this just go wild like there are moments where I'm like if I do that at the end of it I am exhausted and it's like a good workout oh it yeah it really is cathartic to pretend to get that stuff out in me like in singing it's great what's more cathartic singing with your folks in st louis where i know you're you're hunkered down right now or on tour which by the way i can only imagine what sort of first of all you know just from hearing from friends that went to your um your your last tour before we shut down and how incredible it was and how i had one friend be like a, a guy of uh, his girl that uh, um that he got introduced to you through and he was like just watched a special and he was like i did not like he's like how do you get that much right away like she's fucking and i was like she writes a lot he's like is that what it is and i was like 
yeah. How else do you think she's coming up with? He's like, I don't know. That's why I asked. I was like, that's why I told you. She's um, prolific at that. You know, it's so funny because it, I, I do know that a lot, I, will, I have, I generate a lot of material, but I really do attribute it to just having an inability to not do it every night. And like, yeah. if you work out every day, you're going to get fit as fuck. Yeah. And so I'm, I'm just like, I just, I get bored if I was doing the same material. I couldn't do it at the, at the, at the stamina I do it. I would, I would hate my jokes. And what? so I have to generate new material just to enjoy it. When did that flip for you, by the way? Because I, I totally agree with that. If I go on stage and do any, like, there has to be a, uh, I don't even know what the percentage would be, but, and whether it comes from uh, audience interactions or actual material, like if I, if I know that there's not something, there's, to me, there's no point in even stepping on stage. If what? If you don't. <laughs> Sorry, I was like working on my fan and I'm like, I feel like I'm trying to look like Beyonce right now. It's just not working for me. By the way, how many first dates have you uh, been on over the course of your whole life to where I did that as a dude and you totally spaced out because you were just like, dude, fuck this guy. And he finishes and you go, wait, what? And then yeah, I do it all the time. I'm honest. I don't try to be like, yeah, okay, cool. Like, I hate when people do that to me. And I'm like, you were zoning out. Sorry. But I knew it was a good question. And now I don't <laughs> even remember what you're well, saying. It was, it was a question. and It was just piggybacking on us both agreeing that like being on stage without uh, something new to talk about is, oh, yeah. is pointless. It does, and I was like, asking, it, when did that switch for you? Was it like a, a right away or were you like – Five years in uh, after kind of like doing stuff. And yeah, you're like, right. Ooh. There's a switch. Yeah. It happens. I think, I guess, I don't know. I guess when it, it, in the past three years, maybe I've been that kind of greedy about it and being like, I just can't, it, it's not even like, I just can't do it. I just don't have the, um, the energy to fake bits and to just act enthusiastic about something I don't care about. Like it right. will make me so sad and depressed to be that fake that it's not worth it to me, like mentally. And it just, it's survival. Like I, I write when I'm backed into a corner. That is I, all my best jokes are always written on the way to a show when I'm driving to like a, a show that I needed to like have new material for. Oh, wow. Or last night I did my first stand up set on zoom. Yeah, I want to ask you about that. I, I yeah, did it and, on Friday. Wasn't it great? I was so I mean, nervous. Of, oh, a thousand percent. I dude, Weren't I was about you like to, first year of comedy nervous? That is so crazy you said that. A thousand right? and ten percent. I'm sitting there like backstage and they're like and I'm watching and I'm just like, fuck, am I like it was such a uh weird muscle that hadn't gotten flexed in that like setting, but it was also just I don't know, like you doing podcasts and a few other smaller Zoom things, but still that's it was it was set up almost you know as close to a show as they could do it with like oh so i was like oh fuck like it, did it take for like for me it took maybe a minute to lock in like yeah. a, a minute or I'm two to just get seconds. my bearings yeah. and then it was like oh this is stand up on a delay you just got to wait for the laugh two seconds longer yeah and, and in that two seconds is a lot of fear <laughs> like, you oh, know yeah. what i mean Oh, You're yeah. like, come on. Was it good? Come on. I, I get impatient in that two seconds. Oh, man. Yeah, my stepdad logged on and, and he was like, he's like, you finally went at a pace I could understand. And I was just like, yeah, I mean, I definitely did have to slow down. He's like, you talk too goddamn fast. He's like, but, you, you know, I was like, well, you know, my real dad seems to agree with my speed. But, um, uh, <laughs> see, yeah, okay, good. There, see, there was a delay on that joke. You were like, is this real? Is he doing, is he trying to? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> But there's there was something ab <laughs> about it that was like seeing at least a face like back at you. Wasn't that like I didn't I saw my own face, which I loved. I was just like looking in the mirror the whole time. Just like, and you know, <laughs> another thing I was like hitting my angles. I really there was a there's a fun you. part to all of this. Like FaceTiming is for narcissists. Like guys, I've always said this guys I've dated. I've dated a lot of narcissists. I think, you know, I feel like girls tend tell? to di diagnose what's tell, guys. What's a tell for a guy? They love to FaceTime. They love it. They love FaceTiming because they found a way to look at oh. themselves <laughs> while talking to you. Oh my God. And it's like, it really, the whole time Psycho. they're always just kind of like, and it got you, and, and, and the number one thing is too many selfies. A guy that has too many selfies, it's just, that's a Thank really, you. that's a huge red flag. Oh, I completely agree. Man, there's, yeah, there's even comics that post a lot of the, like, solo, just, and, and you're like, man, you gotta, like, 
Girls are, Balance I don't know out. why, but girls are some, I give them the pass with selfies, but a guy, and I'm not yeah, saying that sure. there aren't, that guys that take selfies don't deserve love, but just not from me. I, <laughs> I, that's not gonna, I think it's just a weird, it, it just, but I've, I've been so attracted to guys that do it and I will continue to be. What, Despite what would, myself. What would, <laughs> what would you be more um, turned off from, right? So your selfies obviously uh, perturb you a little bit. So if, you, if a guy sent you three selfies in a row or three dick pics in a row, what gets you more just like, okay. I can't believe that. That's a great question. I do want to differentiate between selfies exchanged it, to each other for each other. You know, yeah. or uh, and selfies on Instagram. Okay. If well, you go hey. to a guy's Instagram and it's all selfies, that's a red flag. A selfie, a guy well, sending you selfies pics. is sweet. Okay. Yeah. Right. Because I will tell you, I was just reliving this moment because I'm putting it into a script right now. But one time I texted a guy a selfie that I liked and I was like kind of dating him. And um, I had, he was kind of like getting like, he just wasn't responding as much and kind of turning into an asshole. And I texted him. Uh, I like sent him a cute selfie where I looked so hot and like so cute. What's and you, he wrote back like two hours later, going to bed. <laughs> Whoa! Right. So, so you followed up. You followed up. What did you send back after you said oh, that? Oh, I never. <laughs> ever followed up he had to come like like chasing me back because that was like i think that was the the that was definitely like a final straw moment God that i threw damn. in his face later this uh are you getting flooded with memories i know you joked about it on bill maher which was uh incredible by the way thanks it, especially because he opened with saying you're one of his favorite comics which is like i know on. can you we could see in your face how genuinely you were like Whoa, thanks, man. That's honestly, funny. I blocked it out until you just said it again. Oh, sorry. Like, no, I, I, it's too much to, to handle. I know that, like, I, he's, and he's my dad's favorite. Like, Bill Maher is my dad's Whoa. favorite person alive. I, I, when I had my dad on my show, Not Safe, he was hooked up to a lie detector test. And, yeah. like, and it's a really funny segment it from is. my show. I put my I parents it. on a lie detector. Yes. Yeah. And to calibrate the test, um, cause they have to ask you like a, a question to make sure it just works. It's a question they know the answer to. Yeah. And my question to test my dad was, do you love Bill Maher? And he was like, yeah. And then the guy gave me a thumbs up and I'm like, <laughs> okay, the machine works. That was how he calibrated it. And so That's then I'm taping great. Bill Maher in my dad's office and my dad's in the next room as I'm like, interviewing it was like a really cool thing because i'm living with my parents right now yeah i was gonna so, say like that's even it was i don't even know where wild. you rank that for him as far as like to do the show in his house and have so bill maher is basically in your you know in his house like did he come and like knock on the door and try to be like can i like pop in and just be like because it's that cash right Oh, like my, yeah, no, they are very good about being like, do your thing, do your thing. And like, will they were just waiting in the next room, just like being quiet and like, huh. and then I walked in and I was like, it was good. And they were like, ah, like, you know, it was that kind of thing. But it's so weird, like taping TV shows from my parents' house, which I'm doing Conan coming up and I'm like, nice. I, but I, but I give it, and the thing is like, I try hard on these yeah, and yeah. it's exhausting. Sometimes you're just like, I even, I kind of don't want them to ask me and I don't mean to be like, I'm not grateful, but sometimes I'm like, cause when you get asked to do things, sometimes you have to do them cause the experience is so cool. Have you ever yeah. said yes to something that you're like, I don't really want to do this, but I can't oh, not thousand, do thousand, dancing with the stars season 27. About, <laughs> did you get asked? No, I was on the show because they asked and I'm oh, like, Oh, that was I season 27. I thought there was what? another one and you were saying I, Oh, no, 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 no. Oh, yeah, I'm, no. I'm crossing fingers crossed, they asked me again. A thousand. I mean, I did that. Um, Justin Marino's uh, funny dance show with Brad for on E, which is not Dancing with the Stars, but like it was one of those. Our choreographer was the guy who choreographed for Britney and Janet Jackson. Dude, and, that's and, the coolest and, show ever. Is, has your episode aired yet? Oh yeah, I'll I'll. How uh, was you, it? I'll send you a couple of it. It was one of the most fun I'm things. I'm so I've jealous ever that they done. didn't ask me. I think it's the most fun show ever. I had no idea this was even a show. Oh yeah, and it's like an hour long, and there's like a they did all this behind the scenes. I mean, it's, you know, Dancing with the Stars esque, but meets lip sync battle and also right. just goofier. You know, it's for the Oh my God, I'm encouraged. dying to do that show. I They'll like, do another one. I think it's crushing for them. It's so- Oh, I'm so awesome. glad because that's so fun. When I saw that, I was like, I can't believe this exists and I, I, I'm dying to do it. I did, all I want to do is dance. I had to dance closing out my um, special yeah. or my, you know, the special the I'm working on. Yeah, so, so why, and that's, I was, wanted to ask, like, how, where did that idea come from? 
First of all, didn't know Andrew could fucking move and shake like that. Like, yeah, Andrew's got good moves. Yeah, I don't Andrew Collins, shout out. Yeah, uh, shout out. Super funny. Uh, super. Uh, I don't know if agile is the right word. Just knows his body. Is yes, that- very comfortable in his <laughs> own skin. Just, uh, just a uh, yeah. He he does have good moves. There's no denying it. And he was a part of the dance. Yeah, I just decided to close out my show with a dance because I was like. I can do anything I want. Like, who cares? And I really, if I had my way, I'd be Taylor Swift. I don't want to be a comedian, really. I want to be Taylor Swift. And this is the way I can be Taylor Swift for a moment at the end of my show because I've earned it because I'm a good enough comedian that I, if I want to dance at the end, you're going to watch me dance. And it's not even funny. It's like, I'm just dancing. And it's still a spectacle and it's still something I put work into artistically. It's not my forte, but man, do I look forward to it. It's the best part of my night when I'm on tour. Is it like a reward? Like you feel like, all right, I crushed that show. I get to do this in like, it almost makes you feel like, you know, you'd feel bad if you did that and you kind of didn't give the show, you know, you could give, right. And you're like, Oh, I'm still going to like, I don't even want to do this because I know I didn't. Is that factor in at all or no? Is it, Oh, like I still have to end on a dance even if I don't close as strong as I want to. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there's been times where like a dance is not necessary. And then it's just so funny that we're dancing in this like casino with people people who are- it? No, people love it. And people are kind of like confused because it really comes out of nowhere. There's no like precedent. It's not like I end the story, the, my set, and I'm like, and that's when I taught myself to dance. And then it like cues. It's just like at the end, I'm like, it, they, it's, I'm like, you guys eat ass. Ladies eat ass. I think I end with like an eating ass bit. And then I'm like, and hit it, DJ. And then I'm just like, Andrew Gollin. And then it just like Fucking turns awesome. into this show. But um, it was turning into something, you know, it was like I was building it as I went on the road and it would have eventually been something that it will never be now. And I mourn that, but I'm also like, ah, well, what's next? By the way, coincidentally, Taylor Swift ends her shows by screaming eat ass and then (laughs) starts dancing. So I see where you got it from and it's maybe you're paying homage to her. Uh, (laughs) Do you, how much do you just straight up? And I, you can skip, say skip if you are just so tired of this question. Um, but I want to know from you, because, again, you're like a, a true up on stage. Like, when you come to L.A. Skip. And you're. Just kidding. <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> just anything you would spray ask. Spray this fucking laptop down for that shitty question. Um, <laughs> well, just something about, like, missing. Again, like, when you come to L.A. and you're doing a bunch, you're doing your show, you up, your serious show, which is great. And Conan, whatever. You're still up on stage every night, which I'm always like, God damn, she's just packing it in and not missing an opportunity to. To work and um yes. so so because of that how much do you truly because you see people now posting like old stand-up pictures and just being like i fucking miss this i just like i just i'm posing it just so i can feel like what i feel if i'm posting those while we're when we were doing it just to you know what i'm saying just to kind of get your brain yeah. like to remember who you were yes. and like what you did and how fun it was and to remember i'm i'm only remembering the good things too i'm not remembering a lot of the shitty things but that's good but i'm not someone who's like i'm dying to get back up there you know like i feel pretty artistically satisfied with the other things i'm doing but I, you know i what I don't miss is having to like go out every night. Like I for I've never once in my adult life. I've been doing this since I was an adult. I've never just ate like eat like you eat dinner and then you like like stop like the day and you just kind of like go to bed and you like merge into your bed. Like we're doing that. Like I've yeah, never done bad. that. I always have to go out. It's eat yes. dinner and then go out. It's and it's never a night off. And, and having if there like, is yeah. it's because you're sick. Yeah. Wow. Yes. And getting to actually plan an evening of activities or lack thereof. And really what's been awesome for me sometimes is like getting to the end of the night and just being like, I seriously have no game plan. Like the pods, the whatever work I was doing was daytime, mid evening shit. And like, maybe it's like a hang. Maybe I want to hit up some buddies that I like talk to twice a year and do a zoom hang with them or or see people that posted about doing a Zoom hang and get jealous that I didn't get asked to be a part of it. Um, <laughs> I'm just kidding. There's nobody there. Hey, guys. Comedian Adam right here. Hope you're enjoying this episode of the About Last Night podcast. 
Boy, I gotta tell you, I've been feeling good lately. And the reason why? Koi CBD. That's right. Back in the game. Feeling like my best self. Look, Koi CBD is the best CBD company in the business. I don't care what you hear from other people, other comics. Koi CDB, CBD. See, I got so much BBD, CBD inside me. I ain't even fucking talking right. You know why? Because I slept well on the Koi CBD gummies. That's right. They've got everything from tinctures to bath bombs to gummies. Uh, they got a skincare line coming soon. They got hand sanitizer during these times. It's very important. So, what you want to do, if you want to start feeling like your best self, you want to take some Koi CBD bombs, put them in the bath, okay? What? Yeah, come on in. Jackson, I'm doing an ad for my podcast. Can you say, hi? Hello. Say, I use CBD gummies. I use CBD gummies. From Koi. From Koi. Koi's the best. Koi's the best. It makes me feel good. It makes me feel good. I feel like my best self. I feel like my best self. Look at these muscles. Look at these muscles. Kiss them. If you get Koi CBD right now, you go to KoiCBD.com, promo code about last night, and you get 20% off your first order. That's incredible. Bath bombs, tinctures, skincare, hand sanitizer, gummies. They've got everything. They're my favorite. It's who I use. So start using it for you too. I can't recommend these guys enough. They're homies and all their shit works. Jackson, say 20% off. 20% off. If you use the promo code about last night. If you use the print card after night. About last night. About last night. Show them those guns again. Kiss them. Mm. Enjoy the rest of the episode. I know you've been, uh, first of all, your millionaire spot. You Like, I got to tell you something, Nikki. What, Adam? Who wants to be a millionaire is next to Classic Concentration with Alex Trebek, which I've been watching old. Uh, classic Concentration. Oh, fucking pull it up just do a deep dive on okay. the tube for you and see all the shows that you didn't give enough attention to classic concentration hosted by trebek first of all before i tell you how great the millionaire shit was that's one of my favorite shows classic concentration in trebek the late 80s early 90s were Wait, very... pre jeopardy trebek oh like not gray stash like well first of all stash um how do you know this show how old are you 37 but when, when, so this, when did he, hasn't he hosted Jeopardy since like he was doing the, it the late same time. 50s? He was doing it at the oh, same time. Okay. The late okay. 50s. I'm kidding. Oh, it's been, <laughs> it's been, uh, you see how, I didn't like, go low enough. I didn't go low enough. That just seemed like I was stupid. <laughs> <laughs> Hitting the right comedy number is very imperative. It's important. I should have said 1937. That yeah. would have been the best number. Also, you can tell I've been watching too much Jeopardy because I was like, that's not fucking right. Like, I was, <laughs> like, I was saying, Jesus, like, I'm sorry. I just <laughs> didn't phrase it in the. What is that is bullshit. Um, <laughs> that, no, he, uh, he got real handsy on this show. Oh, really? Uh, oh, yeah. Uh, all the game show hosts used to. Man, he was like put his hand on her back and then was like holding her hand as he was cutting the commercial. And at one point she says like, like he was like, oh, like I'm not going to bite. And she literally goes, I've heard about you, Alex. <gasps> I mean, this moment is just living out there. And look. Whoa, dude. Where did you see this? <laughs> oh, YouTube classic concentration. I'll pull the link back up. So I you just watched it. It wasn't like an isolated clip of like, watch Trebek Biden, this woman. Like, <laughs> I mean. I'm calling it Bidening. Yeah, I know. God, fucking. Like, <laughs> shoulder rubs are one thing. Sniffing heads, I can't even understand where you're coming <laughs> from with that. But he just likes the aroma of uh, shampoo. He likes a nice shampoo. He's a shampoo connoisseur. Now, let me ask you. <laughs> let me ask you this. If he said that as his explanation, would you take it? Or would you go, at least he's owning up to it. I, honestly, if he were like, listen, I love the smell of shampoo. I lost my grandmother at a young age. And Ooh, um, I strings. loved her so much. And I always remember the smell of her shampoo. And so when I, I've noticed that I tend to, when I get close to women, I tend to want to smell their hair and I, I really realize that's that's probably made a lot of women uncomfortable over the years and it is a weird thing that I have to talk to my therapist about and as your president I will be going to therapy weekly to you know work on myself so that I don't do that anymore uh, that's great Mr. Biden but again the question was what is your stance on Afghanistan oh um yeah uh that's the city okay uh, we're gonna move on to Mr. Trump <laughs> Mr. Trump uh <laughs> Uh, he goes, I'm sorry. I just, can I get a head to sniff real quick? Um, yeah, the, uh, anyway, the millionaire thing was, 
But yeah. He just smells a baby's head and then he's back in the game. I, I mean, it's, it's also – the sniff isn't such a problem as when I see him, like, close his eyes and drift off into some sort of, like – like, it's the – it's the wafting in and then the – like, I've seen him in some videos take a sigh out. It's like, oh, dude, it's it's almost like it's giving him re- – like, it's refueling him somehow. <laughs> he's just like, ugh, Pantene from a 25-year-old. And he just ingests it and just – I don't know what he's doing with it, but it's like you're you're savoring it too long. Do I don't know what sniff. to do with any of it. <laughs> it's such a nightmare out there. I know. Uh, wait, the millionaire thing. First of all, the set cool being on the set like i don't know how much you enjoyed the show when it was like in its prime yeah i loved the show back when it was on like when i was in high school i think it started yeah with regis it was exciting um yeah and it looked exactly the same like it was done in the same way um it was right when the pandemic was starting like it was the last shoot i did and the people that mic'd me were like wearing hazmat suits and they had to warn us like now the people miking don't have corona they're just like they look like they're ready to get it at any like it was just like you were getting mic'd by like a person in a plastic suit and so everyone's kind of scared and it was it was a weird energy but um and there's no audience it would have been cool with an audience you know oh, yeah and felt more like millionaire but this you know we uh it was but it was almost like there was something fun about it because it felt like we were just kind of flying by the seat of our pants or they yeah. were at least the producers because there it's like a sprinkling of like assistants and like production assistants in like filling out the bleachers, right. but it was like kind of like the soup in terms of laughter, you know, right. like, cu- yeah. <laughs> so it was like a smattering, but it was also super tense. Cause there was like a moment where I answered the wrong answer right. accidentally so that down for me. So it was like, what movie has the longest, I'll cut to a clip of this. All for the birds. <laughs> Which of these critically acclaimed films was made to look as if it takes place almost entirely in one continuous shot. 1917. The Two Popes, The Lighthouse, Judy. Okay, um, I, I know that there was a battle scene that I watched a clip of that was done in one continuous shot, but that was just one scene. So that's what makes me a little bit worried about this. Um, I have not seen any of these films, Dr. Drew. Seen Judy and The Two Popes, that's definitely, those two are out. Um, the Lighthouse, I, lit- I just know nothing about, so... M- Man. Although, although the, the trailers I've seen for that, it's a lot of close-up cuts, so... That really? Does, yeah. What's it, like, do you know anything about The no. Lighthouse? Except... Just, just a couple images in my head that may be wrong. I'm gonna go ninth. I, I, I think you have to. I mean, I could to. use 50-50 right now, but why use it right now? I'm gonna go... Oh. oh. Should I do 50-50? You... I just feel like we, we were pretty sure of this. We're pretty sure of this. Okay, yeah. Lighthouse, final answer. No, 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 no! Oh, no, 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 Lighthouse, final answer! 1917, final answer! That's what I meant, 1917, final answer! No! 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 <laughs> I, Unless you know it's what? right. Why don't we take a break and we'll figure out what just happened? <laughs> <laughs> No, you all know what I meant to do. <laughs> oh, no. We're going to take a break, and we'll sort this out when oh, we return no. to watch to be a millionaire. Oh, I'm going to throw up. <laughs> a lo- the longest, uh, I think, the, or the, the film was shot in one shot, right? Is that Yeah, basically- yeah. The, which movie has a continual shot? And yeah. it was it like was... Ju- uh, Judy, The Two Popes, 1917, and The Lighthouse. Yeah, and, you and I knew down. that 1917, I'd seen a scene where there was a continual shot, and Dr. Drew had, um, and this was, we, I eliminated two of the other ones, so it was between The Lighthouse and 1917. Pretty much, you hear me kind of talk to Dr. Drew and decide, like, I'm going to go with 1917. We both agreed that's the answer. Like, you kind of hear us agree that. And then I just, in answering, I go, Did it, I'm going to do it this way, and this is what I'm thinking, Lighthouse, final answer, because I just was thinking, I was saying both the names so much when I was debating over it with Dr. Drew that I just confused it, and I locked in the wrong answer. And immediately, as soon as I said final answer, I go, no, no! <laughs> it's just like, I remember in the oh, middle of those no's, I was like, you're on TV, you lunatic. Like, don't have, <laughs> like, control yourself. And I, I have to yeah. say, watching it, I like, it was the realest TV, TV I've ever made. Oh, like, yeah. in terms of, like, Raw. a moment that, 
I was just myself and there was no guard up and that was as much as I was going to get because I really was fucking sad because I was like, you knew the answer. You didn't get to do all that. Like you didn't get to hang out with Jimmy Kimmel and like have a big, like fun segment because you, you, you just talk too soon. I was so mad at myself. And then I literally started crying, which you can't tell because I have too much Botox, but like I literally, (laughs) it was like my, my forehead was frozen, but there was like tears dripping down my face, which you can't conjure. I like, I literally was crying and cause I was so embarrassed and then, um, and then they gave it to me and then it looked like I like cried and I was, I didn't even think they were going to, I cried because I thought I was done. Yeah. And people were like, Oh, of course the girl cries and you, let you give it to oh her. But God. then it worked. So yeah, I was like, <laughs> now I've gotten out of tickets many a time. Uh, that's so, yeah, you want to, yeah. I mean, I'm sure part of a part of you wants to go all the way and like get to the, to the million. Cause that's, that's what the, uh, I mean, I wanted to get as much m- as possible, but I wanted to Let's be funny. Yeah. I wasn't going to take any stupid chances. I wanted, I did not want to walk away with 30. That's all I wanted was not to walk away with a minimum of 32,000. That would have yeah. been like so boring to me. Yeah. yeah. So 125, I was like, yeah, sweet. You know, That's six digits. Great. And it's for charity or do you get to keep it? I gave it to a bird rescue. Nice. It's, it was really a rash decision. I was being hounded. A lot of people are upset about me donating this much money to a bird rescue, but I had to pick my charity before the pandemic. It just looks insensitive due to the current climate when this show aired. So it looks like I'm just like, oh. I'll just like, cause I just said, Jimmy, I like birds. So I literally Googled bird charity and found the first website that looked like oh, reputable, my which God. is true because I was, because that's what I would do. And you know, if there wasn't a pandemic happening, yes. I like animals. I pick an animal I like. I type in the animal, then I type rescue, then I look for a website that doesn't look like it was made Geo Cities. You know, <laughs> I look for a stamp of approval from something, and then I go, yeah, them. And so I I gave all this money to birds. I mean, that's fucking cool. I I didn't know that birds were in so much need of cash. Like, what's going on? <laughs> what are they? What's happening with They're this fucking species? Strap, dude. What? what are they? Um, What's going on with them? You know, there's nothing, everything's wrong with every creature on earth. You pick one and there's there's something wrong with birds. There's, there's birds that have to be saved. My, my, I gotta be honest with you. My initial um, reason for donating to birds was to rescue parrots, to rescue like um, birds, like tropical parrots that have been displaced and bred against their will and stolen from their nests. And, and the, and really it's, it honestly is a really sad thing because parrots live to be like old as shit, you know, and people get them thinking, Oh, I'm just going to get a pet. And then the people like die and their parrots outlive you. You have to have like a plan for your parrot. So there's so many abandoned <laughs> parrots. And so I wanted to donate to a parrot charity that like, you know, takes care of these abandoned parrots that can't be returned to the wild. But then I, I, in my Googling, I just didn't do a good job. And then I ended up donating to like wild birds, which I also love. But, you know, I'm not as concerned as about cranes as I am, like, cockatoos. But oh, I love all birds. I mean, this, yeah, this, that was an incredible. I'll take things I didn't think you were going to say for a thousand, Alex. By the way, parrots, <laughs> by the way. <laughs> I'll take, please don't touch me, Alex. <laughs> by the please way, keep your mitts off me. <laughs> I've way, heard about you, Alex. <laughs> <laughs> Parrot Charity sounds like they're playing Coachella. That's a great fucking band. That name. is a great name. Right? Do you ever spend, by the way, when you're getting lost in your daytime karaoke sessions, do you ever just like fantasize about like going, because look, there's enough d- cuckoos out there that are like, stamps, it might not even come back. And you're like, all right. I mean, you know, yeah, I think anything's really, but no. But I have talked to a, a couple comics that have jokingly, but then also been like, Starting to think about what I else I could do. Yes. And these are um, like they're they're real comics, so there's I, I am not giving a lot of value to the uh, conversation other than like oh it's a fun thing to talk about, but. What do you mean you're not giving value to it? I don't think that. It, We're gonna have, have to, to worry about that. Yeah, and that's probably me. I'm a very glass half full like optimist. I love that. Um, yeah. So that's why I think that I'm gonna not- knock over your half full glass right now. And tell you the truth about the matter. Typical parent you gotta, lover. You know what? You're fine. The thing is, you're fine because you've already have income in other ways. You've are you've planned for this event at just as I have. Clearly. You know, we're, <laughs> what, what do you mean? 
clearly I'm wearing a, a Martin sweatshirt that I bought off the internet off some like random website. But why would that be clearly? Oh, I was making a joke. But why was that? Why would a Martin sweatshirt mean you were clearly planning for this event? Oh, no. I was talking about, I was saying that in line with when you said you've got income from other places. Oh, yeah. Oh, clearly. Like, oh, you're rolling in and you're wearing a Martin sweatshirt. Yeah. Yeah. Got it. Sorry. <laughs> Zoom lag. <laughs> Boy, hey Adam, how'd the podcast with Nikki go? <laughs> Great, my Martin sweatshirt bit fucking off. <laughs> no, oh, it was it a was bit. Well, no, I improvised it because we we're having a nice, <laughs> flowy conversation. Oh, did, did she say it was Zoom lag? Yeah. Oh, that's on you, dude. <laughs> dude, dude, Zoom lag. Zoom Blaze lag. Dude. always says that. <laughs> no, I really that was on me. Okay, but that's all good. The thing is, yes, I am worried that stand up's not going to come back because that was like fucking amazing money like i was starting to see uh, the big bucks where i'm like holy shit if i just do this year i can fucking retire kind of like you know Good for you like m more money than any of us should ever be making to be honest with you it's kind of disgusting but no uh, you're making it, a lot of people happy i know i know but it's still so does the garbage man i'm very happy that i don't have garbage piling up it you know like what i'm saying you're like right. You're right. So everyone has, uh, it, I don't deserve the money, but anyway, I'll take it. It's fuck. fuck it's yeah. the best. I didn't, I, it's one of the reasons I do it. I think is because I want like to be financially yeah. secure. It, and I was preparing for this. I was ready because I was taking every gig, working my ass off, stockpiling money. Cause I was just like, I just felt like it was going to go away. And I felt like, um, you know, like I was going to have to become multifaceted that, you know, I can't just have one thing. I'm too scared. Uh, and it, my anxiety has like served me now because now I can do other things. Wow. But yeah, I, if I would have, if I was five years into stand up, can you imagine how hard this would be right now? If you didn't have Nikki, a hold I think about that, uh, a lot, like how fortunate I am that like, even as nervous as we were, you know, uh, sharing we were for that Zoom thing a little bit. I go, thank God, though. Like, it's it's also, I welcome those nerves sometimes because it's always, I think, just, you know, makes you just strap in and, and elevate your shit and go, all right, the nerves means I care about this and I just want to crush it. And yeah, and, uh, but being able to like quickly shove that to the side and just go, and here we go, we're doing a show, like versus having true panic settle in where you're like, fuck, I booked myself on this hour Zoom show and I've like barely done six 10-minute spots. Like, how yep. am I gonna, or what, you know, whatever. But, it's, you know, it's all scary. That's the thing. Yeah. It was like, it was a similar scariness to even doing shows. So like, I would encourage any stand-ups out there that are like, you gotta get stage in. Just don't be too cool for a Zoom show. Just do it. Yeah, Just I, do I've, it. Been, I've been preaching that hard. Yeah, I think also- Do it. Do whatever you can because you're going to fall behind if other people are doing it and locking into it. Like, you got to, you got to, and I'm talking to myself. Like, that's why I did that spot last night. I just want to make sure I, also, you know. It's, it's tough to say. It's still tough, do it. It's tough to say no to a former presidential nominee. Like. I know when Ben Glebe asks you to do, like, you think maybe some, maybe someday he'll be president and I will be like, remember when I did your Zoom show? Nikki, it's only 10 minutes. That's not Ben. That was like Trump. That's a good, that's a, that's. No, I was trying to do Ben is more like ben and he do, he more. does a thing. He has a gur, which is a thing that people do when they say like things like burger and, <laughs> and like gerber. They put like a little a, a gur. And Ben Glebe has a gur. And Jennifer Garner has a gur. What is he saying? And gerber, by the way. That was your second Gerber. Name. Like it's just like when a Identity. lot of people have gerber gurs. Bit. You'll start hearing them. Yeah. I, I have friends that have gers and I just make them say Gerber baby Burger King. <laughs> and I'm like, you have such a gur. 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 It's a thing that like oh. girls do when they go, I'm a little girl, like gur. Her. And, um, and guys do it too now. It's an inflection that many men use. Oh my God. Ben Glebe did it. He turns up the gur. He turns up the gur when he's on stage too. By the way, that's definitely the name of his next special. Ben Glebe. Turn, turn up, up the gur. <laughs> <laughs> I love Ben Glebe, though. That's why oh, I do do those things. I know. I was I, ready to vote for Ben. Oh, I donated to his fucking campaign right me out of too. the gate. Me too. Good for you. I know, I, me too. I Because also, you know, the guy is so <laughs> goddamn smart. And so, and yes. I see him, like, talk to political uh, figures on his podcast. Or when all of a sudden he'll pop up on MSNBC. And they're like, 
Gerber fucking burger guy, Ben Glebe, is going to stand on healthcare. <laughs> and he's like, that's, I was also at Jesse lately, you know? And then, um, and then he like, <laughs> you know, stays active in the conversation. I'm like, put this guy in one debate. One debate I with know, everybody. He, that's, that's all, all I, I wanted. wanted. Oh, God. Yep. He's so good. He knows what he's talking about. He's smart. He's funny. He's charismatic. He cares. He like actually like cares about people. Yeah, he's uh, twenty twenty four. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. He could run then. Yeah. Like I, I, I just felt so exhausted again. for him. I ran into him a couple times while he was running for president, <laughs> which oh, is just so funny to say. Oh, I know. And he looked so tired. fucking exhausted. He looked tired. Uh, yeah. Um, do, uh, he aged like a president just by <laughs> thinking of trying to I even to take it. the first step to have one, one millionth of a chance to be president. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> are, are, <laughs> I've never tried it anything as hard as Ben Glebe tried to be president. I, I, I love him. Welcome to King Squaro Hotel. May I have your last name, please? Good morning, ma'am. Can I help you? Oh my, what happened? Oh, Bellmen are clumsy and stupid. Still a bellman. You've had this job since high school, right? Well, I actually, no. Oh. I am the bell captain. Oh. All right, kid. You ready for check-ins? I was born. I think he was going to say I was born ready. Steve's the captain. Captain mm. Steve. <laughs> the closest thing we have to a god on earth. Gunther Gashimane! It's worse than I thought. He's a complete slime ball, right? Oh, yeah. No question. Do you feel my foot on your foot? That's not me. There's something under the table that feels like a foot. What are you doing right now? I'm working. I got a promotion. I just lied to Kelly. Why would you do that? I don't know, man. I just want another shot. Sid Whitman worked his way up the ladder and bought the hotel. Mr. Boss! Do me a favor. Take it easy on the dumb man, would you? I'd rather have crack guard melt my balls. Take care, boys. I mean, it's a huge scam. And those girls were in on it, too. Don't you want to know what our bodies are capable of? Girl, yes, yes, oh, definitely. definitely. I just work here during the day, but I, my nights is off. Let's do this! Gunther is conning everyone with spirit fresh. <laughs> You broke into a guest room. This is unacceptable. He has been impersonating a manager. And that is a felony. I don't think that's a felony. He should be fired. Get set. I mean, I'm not sure he's ready. But... Shut up, bitch. <laughs> With our minds, we begin to urinate, and then, for real, into our pants. I'm I saw you going through like your yearbooks. I think it was last night or two nights ago. Oh yeah, I'm doing that every night. I'm gonna. Uh, what was are... I gonna call it? Uh, uh a walk down memory lane. I was going to something where I just take a thing uh, from my past and I kind of like flip through it and talk about it. Love it. My girl and I were watching those and really enjoying them. And you, you were, uh, it was funny that it took me back to something you said on Bill Maher when you, I think it was your opening line when you were like, it's nice to be back in my uh, room, just kicking it. Like, you know, uh, doing the things I did in high school, you know, uh, live with my parents, uh, developing an eating disorder, not coming. <laughs> By the way, you gave that after he laughed. It was like a, like a, an extra yeah tag. oh man it was really great and and then we started doing the thank you stuff. i'm like this is just another great of, uh, example of pulling from what's around you and giving like people when you have a following like you do it's like yeah people want to see this shit and they and like you went through this picture they forget like, that they do you're like this is my first kiss like i think it was consensual so funny by the way <laughs> then you're like dude it wasn't consensual yeah, I mean, the he guy looked like... just a, attacked my face. Yeah, he looked like a two-shoulder. He looked like he sniffed and then went in for the lips. <laughs> and uh, you're like, oh, that's all sniff lipper. And then, uh, <laughs> and then there was a guy that you were like, think I, hooked up with the, I, I think I touched this wiener. I was, I was blackout Oh, yeah, I was blackout guy. drunk. I, I remember grabbing a penis and being like, I, I think I know what they feel like, and I've never touched one. So the only reason I would know is because I did it last night. And like that, but it was that kind of blackout. So I think it might've been him. So funny. Are you, 
not only i mean first of all do you enjoy going down memory lane and like pulling up old shit because like I, it's been time, fun yeah right having this it's hard to do home. i wouldn't do it unless i was making content like it's not something i like enjoy doing unless i i'm forced to look at how funny it is and just look through look at it immediately through a comedic lens instead right. of like huh but what i did learn is that like i wasn't as disgusting as i thought i was or um lonesome as I thought I was or tortured. Like I, I had like, I was, I had a lot going on and I remember being pretty happy. It all kind of took a dive my senior year. Boy, and, no. uh, but uh, up until then I like, I had the best fucking time in high school. It's, it's actually a joy to go through. That's awesome. Do you keep in touch? Do you see people and you're like, Oh, there's that. Like how many? People oh yeah. I got, yeah. I have my best friends. Um, we all kind of reunited this past December. I decided to spend so much money on a trip and fly all my girlfriends out to Cabo. Oh and like, God. we haven't talked in like over a decade, some of us and just got the, get, got the gang back together. And it was magical. We cried. We like danced. We, 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 it was the best trip of my life and we all connected. And so now we stay on a group text and we text each other like every day. And so we're like oh, connected awesome. again. It's awesome. Do you keep in touch with your friends from high school? Yeah, I've, you know, strangely, uh, I'm going to do a Zoom, um, like, birthday hang with a couple of my buddies uh, later tonight. And I've got – I mean, it dwindled down, I think, every year I went home. I, I you know, I, I had a nice group from high school, and I'd say, like, five, six, seven of us kept in touch, like, just for every year. And every time I would go home, would always see them in some fashion, whether they came over on Sunday to watch a, a Seahawks game or, or um, we'd go meet at a bar. I'd go to their house, see their new kid, whatever. Now yeah. it's probably two guys uh, that, yeah. that I go every time I, I, I want to make an attempt. And one of them lives near where my folks live. So that makes it easy. But, uh, but it's just like, it's weird. It how dwindles it just, down. Yeah. I mean, also the ones that got like multiple kids now and move further away i'm like i'd rather see my sister my nieces and nephew than drive all the w drive an hour away to see your kids which i feel bad about but it's like i you know but, uh, but it, yeah i i'm like letting go of feeling bad about not being there for everyone because like uh, that uh, i can have so much guilt over that of not calling people and not reaching out and not being yeah. a good enough friend and sister and it's just exhausting. I'm kind of letting myself off the hook for those feelings recently because, yeah. Do you feel bad when you don't return a guy's uh, request for a picture of your feet? Um, that, that doesn't feel as bad to me. I really did run right. that through my head of, like, have right. I ever felt bad? Um, I, feel, I do feel bad. There is something about when people write, like, a really long – like, guys will write, like, a, a lot of text to me. Like, just putting it all out there and being like – Listen, I, this is my first time I've ever DM'd a celebrity. And I'm not joking you. I've gotten that line. And it's, it's not that it's not true. It does mean something. That means yeah. something that out of every celebrity, they chose me to, like, like come after. and yep. like special. Th you, like, thank you for thinking that I was that approachable. I'm not. <laughs> so I'm not going to even accept your request. But I will read it and not accept it. So you'll never hey. know if I read it or not. But I did read it. And you, I do want to say that th there are guys that, like, feel like they really see me. And they listen to my podcast. And they feel like they know me. And they really put, like, a good – and some of them do. Some of them could probably love me and be, like, the best men to me ever. But yeah. it's just, like, they live in Des Moines. And it's, like, well, that just can't happen. Um, but I do think that – that I do, I do feel bad sometimes when I see those and I'm like, I'm never going to write back to this guy and I feel bad, but I can't, I can't. Are you, uh, cause he put a lot of work into it. It's like a love letter, you know? Yeah. I just, I, I can't, but imagine. I didn't ask for it. You didn't. What's your, what's your ideal? Like during this pandemic too, I, I, you know, I see people like flirting up a storm and, and hear different, uh, you know, adventures about people, uh, through the apps. Are you finding that it's like, because you can't see, I mean, look, you could FaceTime with somebody. I'm living with my old parents, so I can't go fuck anyone or risk it or sneak out. If I bring back COVID, because I had to just go get, get it in, <laughs> you know, and not even get it in, it would be some desperate attempt to get attention from someone who would never love me. It would leave me feeling empty. It would leave my mom <laughs> fucking dead. I just, it just can't risk it. You is, know? That the, is that the script you're writing, by the way? Because that is a fucking yeah. great story. It's so, tr <clears throat> it's true though. It's like, I can't hang out with anyone and my ex-boyfriend who is the only person I've slept with in the past fucking seven years. 
um, he just moved back to town and we're both single. And I'm like, Oh Fuck. shit. Plot twist table for one. It's crazy. I'm living in St. Louis and he moves back to town uh, during this, not like because of the quarantine, just out of pure coincidence. This is like opposite Sweet Home Alabama. Yeah. Well, he, the thing is, he's not really he, – he shot me a text this weekend and was like, hey, do you want to hang out this weekend? And then he never followed up. And I'm kind of like – Oh, dude. Nah. It's, not, it's not nice, right? Oh, man. You got to so – see, did you respond? So he wrote me on – so I can run this by you. Okay, he wrote yeah. me on Thursday – um, hey, I would love to have a driveway hang with you, you know, like social distance. Yeah. Are you down cool. for that? And I was like, I'm so down. And then I think he said, okay, I'll, um, I'll, like I'm down for a driveway dry hub. Let's, let's plan for, yeah, if it's at night, then it can turn into a, a, a <laughs> something, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, okay, driveway and driveway out. seems so like high school, like, love it, love it the was, location. It's so cute, right? So like cute. underneath, like, and there's like kids playing, and there's like dogs barking, and like, and just maybe a guy walks by with his dog while we're kissing, and it's like, oh my god, like stop. Totally. And then we like also so much opportunity to see cute shit that you can both that he can like, like comment like, on, like see a dad helping his kid ride his bike for the first time without <laughs> Wait, what did wheels. you say? You just cut out. Oh, like seeing a. Uh, I was doing another Martin sweatshirt bit. Uh, that was probably. <laughs> <long-time>. <laughs> I just pretended not to hear. <laughs> Yeah. Like if you saw like some like a dad helping his kid ride his bike and you could both yes, be like, yes. oh my God. and maybe he, you know, takes advantage of that. And he's like, I don't know when my dad did that for me. God. And you're like, oh, my God, did he do that? And you're like, yeah. Yes. And then he makes a joke about it. So he like tugs at your heartstrings and then comes back with a sucker punch of laughter. And you're like, dude, this guy is fucking coming inside. My parents aren't going to make it through the evening, you know? Yeah, they um, <laughs> They better start wrapping themselves in cellophane and putting on Bill Maher. Fire up the hydroxychloroquine <laughs> because get it, get it going. Put it on the burner. I don't know Nick's what you do with it. Getting the dick, yeah. Um, I, yeah, no, it, but to, but to yeah, he, he didn't follow up. He, he said, "I'm gonna, I'll let you." Um, he goes, "Let's plan for tomorrow. Let's plan for this weekend." And um, and so it's this weekend. It's Sunday night, and uh, haven't heard from him. Let me check my phone just to make sure. Yep, nothing. I mean, that is so, like, this is the type of shit that happens where I just go, come on, like, uh, you're blowing it. Like, I won't forget this. This will take a lot of cleaning up to do. And it could have been so easy just to just be like, hey, I can't. Instead of just like, but, you know, also, maybe I need to stop having any sort of hope and expectations and just like, you know. No, I mean. But that's the that's the fun of it, right? Is to like get excited about the potential, like yeah, even the dr- like, and also I'm, you were it was very innocent. You were like a, a fucking kicking it in the driveway, like my parents can look through the window and fucking get excited. Yeah, I just don't think he's down to bang. Like that's the thing. I think he just wants to be friends, and I don't really. I, I got. I I have to assess whether I want a friend or not. You know. I think you got plenty of pals for the pandemic. I have so many friends. Listen, I care pals. about them. Yep, da, 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 da. But ba, ba, unless ba, ba. you want to love me, I'm not even going to really. It's going to be hard to even like you. Oh, my God. I just saw you hosting a daytime dating talk show in like your late 70s. And you've converted to Judaism. And you're only having on like young Japs to hear about how fucking promiscuous they are. Um, I love it. I think we should pitch it to Quibi. <laughs> we could Let's, fucking actually do it like that. If you just put on some big jewelry, which I'm sure you could wrangle up in the neighborhood. Yeah. And uh, find Whatever a- happened to those shows like Ricky Lakes and like uh, Sarah Jessica Parker. No, uh, Sally, Jesse, Raphael. <laughs> it was some three name banger. Jessica. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I don't know. You know well, those shows, are they still around those like, First of all, Ricky Lake was like putting her foot in Hollywood too. She was like, I'm going to be in the movie Beaches. And you're like, all right. Oh, yeah. Then- she was in Beach. She was in Hairspray and she oh, was, was it- amazing. Yeah, she was. Yeah, Talented. that was her in Hairspray. Yes. Oh, she was so good. And Sally Jesse Raphael um, was the monster in Stranger was- Things. And a lot of people don't know was that. What- Sorry, you're cutting out. What'd you oh, say? The monster in Stranger Things. <laughs> Martin. Not worth it. <laughs> God damn it, Martin. <laughs> um, Martin knows- Sweatshirt. He knows that I'm making it. By the way, I saw Martin at the comedy store. Do you get geeked out or do you get starstruck when people that have, you know, a legend, icon, whatever, everyone's got their own labels. But when somebody of that magnitude pops in and you haven't seen them, do you get, are you so about the business and the work that you're, and, and, and 
been around enough cool shit yourself to where you're just like, oh, cool, Martin's here? Or do you go, oh, I'm going to watch that. That's fucking awesome. Oh, Adam, you know, Adam might have a great sweatshirt bit about it someday. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, I feel like I still get starstruck. I love stars. I love seeing people that from my childhood. And like, it, I had a moment the other day doing a podcast with Bob Saget. And I was like, Whoa. I cannot believe I that I'm talking to Danny Tanner. It's just, it's you one of those podcasts. Those- that's so fucking rad. Yeah. No, I just saw him come like- out with that. And I was like, I was like, dude, this is a going to crush. It's going to yeah. do like what Dax and Conan, I think did. Right. I like, think so too. He knows everybody. He's so nice. I feel like he's going to slip into the interview thing. You tell me. He, it was awesome. And oh, he's great. so, he's done my radio show a bunch. So we already had a good rapport and he's just so funny. And, but so just funny. knowing him and being Friends with Bob Saget is so just weird. so wild. Like things like that, there that really um, like trip me up sometimes. I'm trying to think of the last time I got like truly, truly starstruck. I mean, you've met some pretty huge stars. When was the most like <gasps> you've been? Oh, was it sin- Martin? Sin- <laughs> 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 Fucking no, uh, no Zoom uh, leg on that one. Um, there <laughs> probably. Well, the first uh, celebrities I ever saw in L.A. when I moved there in 01 to go to college was Leo at the Grove. Uh, bumped into him. He was had a hat down, and we just bu- he was like hat down trying to. You slip- literally bumped into him. Bumped into him, and I go, "Oh shit, my bad, dude!" And he just looked up enough with his under his hat to go, "All good." And I go, "Whoa!" <laughs> not comfy enough to not respond like that. So I just go, "Hey!" <laughs> and then he kind of smiled and turned around. Was like. Did yeah, he, like, acknowledge it? Yeah. And then I saw Larry King there when I was super baked, and I was in the lobby, and he's there with his, like, nephew. My buddy and I were going out to get a refill on popcorn, and, and we see him at the snack machine, and I go, holy shit. I go, I go, my buddy, I go, I got to say something. He's like, no, you don't. I'm like, you're right, but I'm going to. So I go up, and I was like, Larry, dude, big fan. Fucking what are you doing here? And he's like, I'm with my nephew. Do you mind? And I go, not at all. I just got interviewed by Larry King. And then he just shook his head and turned around and walked the other way. And then, oh my God! Wait, do you mind? He didn't like that. I'm I'm burning up. Do you mind if I take off my sweatshirt oh, for, for a sec? Like yeah. I'm doing a wardrobe change. I think I might regret what I'm wearing underneath, but I'm just gonna risk it. You know what? Now that you said that, we I'm, all. It's time. Is, is this weird for a podcast? So a oh. wardrobe change. <laughs> I'm comfortably hot in my damn office. If it's a Martin sweatshirt, I'm gonna fucking lose my mind. Oh my God! Can you imagine? That would be the best. I tried to look cool and like an. Oversized, like baggy, sweet. I tried to look sweet and like a oh, sweatshirt, and it backfired. It. No, you're fine. Um, and then I turned off my fan because it looked like I was trying to be Beyonce. But um, well, we all are a little bit. Yeah. You don't well, want a little bit is, of hair blown fan- in the wind. You're not human. When you like, have you ever had a fan on? When you're like, have you? Well, you don't have long hair, but when you're a girl and you like, it's pretty long right now. It's just combed back. But yeah, I hear you like your hair. You really feel that pop starry. Do feel. you? I think for my next special, I'm gonna do a wind machine the whole time. <laughs> I was just gonna say <laughs> for how, how long. <laughs> but um, my hair gets getting caught in my mouth and like my stuck on my lipstick. Everyone's just like, turn it holds it stuff off. down again. It's- the continuity is off the whole time. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> nothing is editable. Wait, so Saget, okay, so that was a fucking dream. Did you, um, did no, you? No, yeah, like it's just knowing those people, being friends with people that you looked up to is just insane. Do you find yourself, because you've done so many, aside from your looked own up show. To. I don't think, I, well, I didn't look up to Bob, I guess I did look up to Bob Saget. But I wasn't like someday I'm gonna be Bob Saget. But <laughs> yeah, you know, you did. Yeah, maybe you did. I, Quit lying. I would love to be Bob Saget. So maybe that is a dream I should dream. Can I be honest? I Dave Stamos to me was obviously like what guy wasn't like. I bet that guy's seen every boob, right? Whatever I mean, you think a guy. I think he is. like would turn me on when I was six. Like that's how much Stamos. <laughs> oh, yeah. Was so hot. Like, I think I was, like, seriously, like, knew he was hot at an age where I was far from even noticing men. It just, like, it, he was so sexy. Yeah, like, not fair. Dave Coulier, I think, was the one that I was, probably because of the, they did all these voices and had fucking puppets. And oh, he was, was just, the best. But yeah. he was so lonely. He never dated. Did, 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 did Joey ever date? Now, every now and then he brought a, a girl back and was, like, turned into kind of, like, it was almost like when Urkel went to St- Stefan Urkel. Like, he kind of... Like, put on, like, nicer pants, but then all of a sudden, <laughs> without fail, he'd get downstairs, and she was like, so, Joey, I'd love to, I'd love to maybe, you know, see what, you know, smell your, 
you know, see if you're if your balls it i'm paraphrasing i don't remember the dialogue right. on it this probably show. wasn't exactly that but yeah something close to that it was something that was like moving the story along and showing that joey might be stepping out of his comfort zone and getting to do some some but he stuff. never ended up with anyone no because then he was like here's a puppet and she was like okay oh, he was always hiding and behind the jokes yeah yeah he just, he just i think he got in his own way cock blocked his own i you know in progress. a lot of ways i relate to joey when i think about it just like <laughs> Putting on this facade, hiding behind the, the hiding behind the act. Yeah, yeah. There, you you don't protective. See, have you uh, have you been diving in? Oh no, you froze, Nikki. You there? Uh-oh. You're cutting out. You froze. You good? Are we good? You, you cut out so much. I'm so sorry. You'll be able to edit this, right? Yeah, it was, it was momentary. Uh, yeah. Um, okay, so wait a second. What were you just saying? Because I had a really good point. Fuck. Uh, I was saying, um, oh, uh, Coulier. You said you relate to Dave Coulier. I have full bars. Here we go. Are you good? We're good. Yeah. Are you good? Are you good? Yes, Nikki. Yes, I'm here. Okay, great. I think I'm back. I'm back on. My internet got a little spot. Okay. Um. You said so, you relate to Dave Coulier. Yeah, I relate to him. I relate. Like, it's so funny. I think I always wanted to be like a a tortured like alone artist because I was the other day I was singing karaoke and I was singing um one of my favorite hits from the late '90s, which was Britney Spears' "Lucky." And I remember I used to sing Whoa. that song. And it's about a fame, a girl who's famous, and um, but she cry, cry, cries in her lonely heart, thinking if there's nothing missing in my life, then why do these tears come at night? And I was like, I used to, I remember I would sing it when I was in eighth grade, and I was like, someday I'm gonna be famous, and like I'm gonna, uh, boys aren't gonna like, like I'm gonna be alone inside, and and uh, I just like kind of yearned for that. I longed to sing that song someday and have it like have meaning to me, something, and yeah. now it 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 is that my life. <laughs> I sing the song and I'm like, the lyrics like are my life. It's like, she's so lucky. She's a star. And like, I feel that I am lucky. I am a star. Yeah. But, and I don't, but I don't cry, cry, cry in my lonely heart because I'm on too many um, antidepressants and I can't really do that. I, I can would only love do that if that I get the wrong the answer on, uh, <laughs> on Millionaire. I should, I should redo that song on, as someone who's on antidepressants. Very funny. I bet. Do you think the way that like Eminem, retweeted Dalia when he was like in and did a rap of him if you did that you think Britney would would be down for the cause and laugh at herself? I don't know as long as she hasn't burnt down her uh you know tech facility she might come across like did you know oh, she burnt yeah. down her gym I saw something I saw one quick you know sometimes you flip into the channel and you see a, a blip of like entertainment tonight where they're like whoa you <laughs> don't want to <laughs> miss <laughs> this great yep. theme song by the way they're like Britney the Spears best. Lit some shit on fire. Stay, stick around. And I was like, whoa. And then it just, I couldn't. Yeah, so she's just like, hey, y'all. I haven't lifted weights in a while because I burnt down my gym. I lit two candles and, you know, the rest is history. She, like, says something like, and, you know, and one thing, she goes, one thing led to another and I burnt my gym down. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, she'll be the worst arson, like, <laughs> fucking, the, they're like, what happened? Well, you know, I showed up. Bought a bunch of kerosene. Next thing you know, the whole place was fucking in flames. You're like, so what happened during yeah. that? That's she insane. owned up to it. She blamed, I think she was blaming the amount of candles. She really wanted to stress it was two candles. It's like, it doesn't matter. It's still an accident. It's okay. But she was like, you know, I lit one candle and then there was another candle and one thing led to another. <laughs> then the next thing you know, Kevin Federline showed up with a blowtorch. We were all like, hey man, social distancing. He was like, fuck that noise. And he started fucking bringing it. He pulled out some more candles and we we're like, oh, this guy's actually giving us a little celebratory reversal. This is funny and, and enlightening. And then, yeah. <laughs> K Fed. K Fed's the Joe Exotic of the the, the crocodiles are uh, <laughs> Britney's gym equipment. <laughs> Did you, uh, man? Where is that guy right now? There's certain th- this amount of downtime has given me like, to, like where I'm like, like is K Fed all right? Like, what checking in on? We should yeah. maybe check in on him. Do I don't little. even know if I'm going as far as is he all right? I'm just like, where is he? Where like, is he now? Right. We haven't right. seen a post from him. These these are the types no, of people that we... could be taking advantage of. Of being like, yo, just so everybody knows, I'm all good. Like, that yeah, might get a thousand retweets. Know. 
That would be hilarious, though, if we went and checked and K-Fed had been doing that every day and, like, getting no likes and just being like, hey, guys, I'm good <laughs> the whole time, and no one cared. Oh, dude. All his, like, fan pages are retweeting it. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yes. K-Fed oh. fannies. Oh, boy. Oh, what are your fans yeah. called? Um, oh, I don't, need, I, I don't have a name. Do yours have a name? I mean, let's, you know, I'm approaching 100K on Instagram. Rabies? To, rabies? Well, let's, let's swap that P for a B. Yeah, rabies. Oh, right, 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 rabies. Is that what they're called? No, but that. That's uh, pretty good. My. Um, they're rabid. Uh, yeah, I, I don't know if I have it in me to do that. I don't. Do it ironically I, is what you do it as. Yeah, you have to. Um, you I can't remember really like, think that, that, yeah. Dean Del Rey called his, uh, has his Del Razors, right? And um, yeah, that's, I mean, that's amazing. It's amazing. And there was this night we were at the comedy store, me, Sandy Danto, Polly, and Polly was like, dude, that guy's being super shady. He keeps like staring at us, like, what the fuck? And Dean's like, oh, he's cool. He's a Del Razor. And Polly goes, it's a great Dean Polly, go <laughs> Polly goes, what the fuck is that? <laughs> <laughs> That's goes, Adele Razor. He said yeah, it seriously, Dean. Yeah, I know. And so Polly just coming in real quick with the bro. What the fuck is that? <laughs> <laughs> That's a good Polly too. Just, uh, I, I mean, yeah, I don't know. But again, it's like when you get that. If you got millions, man. I mean, you're aren't you like there or right there or approaching? No, it? I'm. I'm. Uh, I think I'm around six. That's a lot. Uh, Hundred thousand. But then you like. I mean. That's a lot. And I'm like, wow, I can't believe I achieved that or whatever. I'm not going to like put out a tweet that says like, I'm at a million. I don't think I'm going to like celebrate it by like spelling oh, out I one million with my yoga poses <laughs> and be like, guys, I reached a million. Oh, 800,000. We did it, guys. We, it's just because we of each one it. of you. I love the we did it. The we did it for you having followers. Fuck you. Oh, Who gives a, a fuck about how many followers you have? It's so stupid. But it do, it is currency. I mean, it is exactly. When I see a guy on Raya, I like see how many followers he has. I'm like, is this person? What <laughs> If they're in the entertainment business and you you have followers, followers if you have, are successful. It's kind of a mark of it, right? Yeah, a thousand percent. I Wait, so you don't think... So I'm approaching 100,000, and here's what I've done. Um, not a yoga pose anymore. Thanks for fucking squashing that uh, idea. But I Listen, was, Adam, if you want to celebrate reaching 100,000, you let me hear, should. Let, well, let me tell you how I'm going to do it. Like the same way we talked about, if you're going to name your own fans, do it ironically so that oh, you don't right, have right. Polly okay, do calling you out on the patio of the store for you know, the fucking name of them. So I uh, sent Lindsay Lohan a request on cameo to make me a message uh congratulating me but i like put in a lot of specific text brilliant brilliant right brilliant because if you just ask her hey can you say congrats she won't give a fuck and it's not personal if i put in there things that that i did where she's making fun of me uh but in like a dude it'll be so good you okay, just gave cool. Lindsay lohan a monologue that's amazing <laughs> yeah well that's I love that you see that part of it because that's the other thing where I'm like, no, it's oh. artistically a great idea. It's a that's okay, cool. fantastic. Okay, cool. Uh, and happy 100,000, man. I knew you could get there. We did it. Are you one of these guys that also? We did it. No, you totally are this guy. I've been to your apartment that you put your. I bought a condo. I moved from there. Oh, but well, that place was nice. But I'm just saying the way you decorate, you you have your it's accomplishments not like that. around you. It's we've switched up. That was that was. That I was think the that old was, you. Yeah, let's let's get out of that guy. But that's also like... Who was that guy? I don't know. You know what I think? I think, I, you know, it's the same guy, you know? Yeah, for, I think like, it was cool. Like, it wasn't, like, uh, over the top. Um, well, I think I you know me it. well enough. I don't, like, I, it's, I'm not... I don't know. It's, it, it, it's Yeah, like, the Heat poster, for sure, I was going to put that up because they yes. only made, like, 10 of those. And I had it in my old apartment tacked to the wall. No, it makes sense. And my mom... And then I was like wanting to formalize the apartment podcast wise. And I was like, what do I have to put up to make it feel like a comedy uh, environment? So it was like, oh, a podcast poster, a tour poster with, with Adam Devine. You know what I'm saying? Like shit that yeah. was. No, I, it was a good set. It was a set dressing. There you go. And you, it, they were cool looking posters. That's what I'm saying. The, the, the style was cool. Like when I see people's cue cards from their first spot on Seth Meyers, I can't. <laughs> I can't respect you anymore. 
as a, like oh, I get it that you're it, if your mom framed it, but just put it in the closet. Like that's just such a you need. I would not want to be haunted by the one time something good happened to me. <laughs> Every time I walked into my apartment in Astoria, you know, yeah, just to open it and be like, I was on Letterman once, and just <sighs> to me that would like haunt me, not inspire me. <laughs> That's really fucking funny. Yeah, that um what do you have in your uh place there? Have you sent your folks accomplishments to uh celebrate? Um you know I have there's there what used to be stuff up but I just um I had to take it down for just it just like looked ridiculous. It looked like I was like people who didn't know I was at my parents thought I had my own posters up like I and I just don't I'm not that. So I took it down but they have like fan art that I've had made for me. Yeah, that's um, cool. But nothing within like reach, which is surprising because I'm well, yeah, like yeah, fan art. Someone made me like a Howard Stern picture and then put me on the other side of it, which is super cool. Yeah. You know, fans make nice shit, and I just give it to my parents because I don't, I don't really want it. But um, yeah, uh, did fan you art get... is always disappoint. Like when they draw you, you're just like, <sighs> okay, <laughs> yeah, all right. Flattered, I've never, it's like... never been easy to swallow. I really, I'd rather you just not try. Damn, you get a lot of it? Or do very abstract. Don't go for realism. I can't, don't get too real on my face. I want like- yeah, like put me in a like, Simpsons cartoon. Yeah, even that would like trigger me. I think you could go <laughs> some way with that one. You're like, that oh, is that Mr. Sad. Burns or me? God damn it. If I'm not as skinny as Lisa, I'm going to fucking <laughs> throw a goddamn fit. I must have the Whoa. same measurements as Lisa. Would, uh, what's cooler, by the way, uh, to your- well, it's the same way that your pops is. Um, and by the way, are you good for like five more minutes? Yeah. Okay, great. What what is uh, is it equivalent the way your dad reveres Bill Maher? Is your mom in the same light a fan of Stern? Did anyone in your family geek out about you very spontaneously going on the show? You've been on before, but I like I did. That one was for me. I mean, Whoa. like my parents know the weight of Stern and like Stern. They do. I okay. Up, At least they understand. Oh yeah. They're, okay, he, cool. they're, they're big fans, but like, I kind of found Stern on my own, I think. And for me, that was like a very personal, uh, uh, achievement that I wanted to have. And I set a goal of like this year I have to get on Stern and I got on Stern and then I got, so I like kind of, you have to work your way on. Like I went on to roast Ronnie, the limo driver. That was my first appearance. Yes. Then I went on and got interviewed because I had, because it was right. I timed it for right after the roast and Howard loves the roast. Loves. And so I killed on the roast of Alec Baldwin. The party you so get on that me. because of that, like knowing in the back of your head, like if I crush, like I, Oh, I think about, uh, you know, yeah. The, the roast, not just Howard, but like everyone, yeah, it's I just, know. everyone crazy. will see this. Fucking Anyone crazy. who watches this stuff is going to see this. So you, this better be great. It's a tremendous amount of pressure that I put on myself and I should, because when it works, it like Game changer, takes you right? to the next level. Yeah. So that's when Howard was like, what it was agreed to have me on as like a full interview. And that was like, it was almost like weird because I felt like I can die now, you know, like I have nothing really. That was kind of the pinnacle for me, <laughs> like in terms of like achievements to be thought of as an artist enough for Howard Stern to sit down and interview me in like a real way and be interested and like have a great conversation and, and have a, and have the appearance have gone well on top of that. It was just like, okay, I'm done. I a thousand percent agree. When Do I you have any that. of those? That, he would be that. Yes, him. Yes, him right? and Him and Conan. Like Conan, those are and my, Conan too. Like that's those I, are the two I always say. Adam sitting on the couch with Conan yes. and being friends with Conan. That is the one. That's the one that I truly. I love that can't you don't even think about. It. That's why I didn't say it before. I can't, I put it out of my head because it's too much for me that I I that he even looks at me as a but I, peer. But you're so. I love that you don't shy away from dropping that fact. Like even when you did his podcast, Conan's podcast was so great, and it was like you mention it, he takes it. And then, like any good person, spins a compliment into something funny and put makes it self deprecating. Oh, but he's like, a, but he takes it, genius. and I love that. I'm like, oh, he like, I'm like, he he, he does. does. He loves that he thinks you're great, and he, and I like that hearing him dig that you, you know, because it's like, I, I don't know, it's it's he's very honest in being like, man, like. I love this generate like people in this next generation, like to you to be I one know. of them, and for him to be a fan, like. That's it, you can hear him get joy out of being like, oh man, I think she's great. She likes me. You're like, fucking, of course she does. I know. Oh. And then when I see him have that moment, I'm like, I can't believe he's having that moment and, yeah. or questioning himself 
ever. Stupid. Like that's why I wanted, like when I did his podcast, I just wanted to get through to him. Like, do you, you must know that you are the pinnacle. Like it doesn't, no one's funnier than you. No. Nope. I hope you realize that. And please hear me when I say that. I yeah. know what I'm talking about. I have good taste. <laughs> Wait, so you're going to do his, uh, uh, his his show on YouTube, yeah, yeah yeah his show it's like next Monday I have like a you know a week to oh, prepare awesome. and which is nice because usually I thought I thought they were gonna ask me ask me and they're gonna be tomorrow and I'd be like okay ah! <laughs> yeah. and um throw together a set but it truly is like a set so I'm working oh, that's cool. why I did a set last night on on Glebe's on our um our gotcha. ex uh non ever president um Ben Glebe. Uh, I did that because I was working on material and needed to like plan what I'm going to talk about. I think um, I'm going to do a bit where I like, cause I've been trying to get my parents to, I need content and like no one takes pictures of me. Like the worst thing about content is that you have to have someone fucking film you and it's embarrassing to do this shit and not, and, and so I do funny things all the time and I'm like, mom, dad, will you just please take a picture without me saying it? Because when I say it, it just turns into a desperate thing and I'd rather it just be like, organic so i don't have to like say it and then hold the dog and do it again you know just yeah yeah, yeah. i don't want to pose right and so i had to like talk to them about it and they are like nikki we just don't think that way we don't think you have to tell us and and then when they do take a photo and if i don't look pretty in it i'm like you guys suck at taking pictures and i just like <laughs> run down the hallway and like slam the door but i uh but i i swear to god like they won't take pictures and i i started doing this thing where i go out to my I've been I've been smoking a lot of pot through this whole yeah, pandemic. Yeah, me too. Can't stop. Like hardcore yep. leaning into it. Yep. Good. No regrets. Good. Um some you regrets. No. It's just like I got to do it. It's 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 getting me yes. through. Good. Yeah. But um the healthy vice. But it's fun because I uh well I've been doing it indoors. And my mom and dad like don't care, but they kind of do, but they're just trying to be cool. So my mom was like, I prefer you to do it on the front porch. And now every time I smoke weed, I have to, I get an alert because my parents ring app goes off. And so I'll be out there like smoking weed on the porch. And then it's like, bring, and then I see myself from behind, just like looking <laughs> just like a total drug addict on the front porch, like lighting a bowl. Like it's not even like a cool joint. I'm just like a, you know doing it from yeah. a bowl. So I keep seeing myself, but the other day ever, I realized like I can see myself now. And now I go out there sometimes just to check like how cute I look from like every angle, just to make sure I still got it. So I'm thinking about doing a bunch of thirst traps with my ring app and then oh like showing God. those on Conan. Cause it's the only way that anyone will take pictures of me. Hilarious. He'll be all about that. That's very funny. Have you ever gotten so high that you have seen yourself on the ring and been like, who's this bitch on our front porch? Yes. Like, who like yeah you have yeah i mean that's what why i go to the ring app because so often i'll see that and i'll go who she's cute and i'll be like who is that and then i'm like oh it's me and then i'm like ew <laughs> she's gross and like you're you know it flips right away so it makes me realize that i don't see myself correctly and that i need to sometimes get a, a ring's perspective on things to like that's keep myself so in check funny because like I, I know many girls relate to that. I've heard girls say that where you'll catch your reflection and you like see your reflection in like a weird, like where you don't expect to see it. And you're like, oh my God, that girl's cute. Oh, it's me. Gross. Like <laughs> it instantly, it flips That's, on a dime. That's so funny. You could, it could take off the way. I mean, look, everyone's in this time looking for like trends or things to like challenges or whatever. Oh yeah, to, that's like, a thing. Up. It could inspire a ring. Ring selfies. Yeah. yeah. Ring thirst trap. Yeah. Um, all right. I want to close out with a quick game. I know you're big. Um, uh, Finish that with, sentence. You're big with, sorry, Eric Griffin just texted me. Do you know who Adam Ray OK is? There's some person on TikTok that has my name and they're like, they do crazy music videos. And I keep getting messages being like, yo, like this is, do you know this person? Same oh, name. No. And I'm like, nope. Uh, you anyway, better register your name. <laughs> Yeah. There's other, it's right, other you, you're already you're you're already sag after you're fine so okay. adam ray can do whatever he wants with those music videos on tiktok it's not Fuck cutting that. in on your i'm agva baby i worked at a theme park um what's that exactly when you <laughs> when, when you play wolverine at universal studios and host a fear factor live show you have to join agva which, which is, is like what does it stand for aggressive gerber <laughs> <Peter>. <laughs> Um, all right, I want to close out with a game. I know you're big with charities, and I want to do a game. Huge. You are. You've, you love the birds. 
No, yeah, I like raising money for you. Things. Do you're very sweet, and, I, and you've done a lot of like hometown shows at the Funny Bone and um, uh, for uh, for animal shelters. I know, and it's just uh, you're really great about that stuff, which is you know unexpected, and no one's asking for it, and you do it because you love it, um, and you have a platform. So I want to uh, do a game with every question you get right. I'm gonna donate a hundred dollars to a charity of your choice. What really? Yeah. Oh my god, this is so fun! Thanks, I did, Adam. I did it with um, uh, WNBA superstar Sue Bird last week, and then uh, and, and another episode after that. And it's oh my god, fun. the pressure's on. Okay, this is like millionaire all over again. <laughs> it yeah. really is. And an extra and an extra thousand dollars if uh, if you freak out. All right, so let's. Yeah, uh, okay, first question: What do you miss more, awkward eye contact or hearing someone cough? Oh wait, the, how do I get these right? They're not real questions. Nikki, let's just play the game and have some fun. What do you miss okay. more, awkward eye contact or hearing someone cough? Um, awkward eye contact. That is correct. $100 in the bank for Nikki Glazer. <laughs> Question number two. What's the best right. thing about quarantine? The best thing about quarantine? Um, that, is really really that, is <laughs> that is correct. I really want to cough. That is correct. That is correct. $200 in the bank. No, I was going to say not wearing shoes. <laughs> okay, yeah. I, yeah. put, I don't ever have to put on shoes. Love that. Yeah. Socks? No, socks are so gross. I don't like the way they feel on my feet. I, it's like I'd rather cold feet than have like a damp cotton on my toes with like dirt on it. By the way, I'm going to isolate that audio and upload it to feet.com and probably yeah. make at least 80 bucks tonight. Oh, yeah. Just describing what like a <laughs> fucking wet, like damp sock on my <laughs> Bunyany feet <laughs> and we my, lost the viewer <laughs> with my gel polish on my toenails that's half come off so half of my toenail <laughs> looks like it has a fungus on it a pink fungus and in uh, my in my damp woolly sock <laughs> that's hanging off the toe like the tip of it is just kind of like it's like a sad <laughs> condom on my foot yeah you like that someone so really just came from that for sure for sure. Well, he took a big sip of something from a fast food cup, and then he and then he just goes, "Oh God!" I'm, the feet I gotta, guys are so fascinating. I I don't mind it because I'm just like, "Fuck!" Yeah. I don't care. As like, I I don't think of it as like a naughty place of myself. So if you catch it, but my feet are so jacked up, I'm kind of like offended that they like them because yeah. it's like, "Oh, you're fetishizing my jacked up feet." Because they're like, "I love fucked up feet." And I'm like, "That's not nice." No. <laughs> <laughs> I get. Wait, can you please, I don't know if that's a bit or not, but can you do, that's a fucking, you gotta write that down. That's really funny. Um, a backhanded, love, Conan yeah, would eat that up. That's so funny, Nikki. Like them, tr like them fantasizing and it's already, you're already kind of like lowering your guard because you're like, it's not that crazy. And then you're like, God, I let you in and you still found a way to be fucking offensive. It's, people do it all the time. Even That's like really funny. people, whenever I, I don't like put posting pictures of my family because my pe people always go, you look just like your dad. And I'm just like, don't say you look, tell a girl she looks like her dad. That's not a really, that's really not nice. No, it's not. And, and they also go, um, you don't look nothing like your mom or like, you don't look nothing like your sister. And my sister's like beautiful. And I'm just like, I get it. <laughs> but like, don't tell a woman she looks like her dad ever. People do it all the time. You've got your dad's ankles. You're like, yeah, that's yeah. not. That does nothing for my self-esteem. I wish. My dad Grayson? really does. I realize my dad oh, really? has, like, better legs than me. Oh, he has, like, example. thinner legs. My legs are can, like, be – they're pretty muscular. And he has, like, these thin legs that I'm like, God, he's got supermodel legs. I, I got jealous of my dad's legs today. <laughs> the real thing. That's amazing. And that was actually question number three. Did you get jealous of your dad's legs today? Yes, final answer. I did get jealous of my dad's legs today. Moving Three, on. Three hundred dollars in the bank, Nikki. Question number four: um, Would you consider starting a karaoke club during this pandemic and doing it over Zoom? Um, how would that work? Yeah, uh, the, the, the yes, yes, I would be, and I. But I'm, I'm, I need to know how it works because it's going to be hard. That is correct. Four hundred dollars in the bank. That is for correct Nikki to follow up with a question about logistics. <laughs> question number five. Four hundred dollars in the bank. Do you think you'll be remembered more for the roast or for uh, boofing it on Millionaire? Um, I definitely think for the roast, and um, and I wish that it were the Millionaire thing because the roast tend I tend to get like um, 
people think that I'm like the queen of mean. And I'm just like, that's kind of not who I am. Yeah. But um, I thought on Millionaire, I thought it was like really myself. And so I hope I'm remembered for that final answer. That's correct. $500 in the bank for Nikki Glaze. We got five more questions and a chance for $1,000 to you. Wow, Adam, that's so nice. Yeah, you got it. Question number six. What's happening more in quarantine right now? Hand jobs or anal for $600? Okay, let me think about this. I definitely think just the, I think they're both down. The numbers are both down significantly, but For because sure. hand jobs are just happening more frequently anyway, I'm going to go hand jobs final answer. That is, that is correct. $600 in the bank. And we actually have audio of Dr. Fauci uh, announcing that at the podium during a briefing. Uh, Great. So fundamentally, hand jobs are, they're, they're still. Ha- Question number <laughs> seven, Nikki, is, uh, is kind of a doozy. Mom or dad, who's crushing it more joke wise during the quarantine at your home in St. Louis, Missouri? Um, I, that is a tough one. They are both killing it constantly, but I gotta say in terms of joke output, I gotta go. My dad, final answer. That is correct. $700 in the bank. Dad, you. what's your father's oh name God. again? He's got EJ a great Glazer. dad name. Yes. EJ. Uh, EJ. Uh, what is, does that stand for two other names? Edward John. Yeah. Whoa. Classic. Know, such a cool name. It's the a coolest strong name. name. You get to call really him Eddie? Is. Um, no, never have. Just I don't even dad. call him dad. <laughs> you just call him EJ? <laughs> no, I do call him oh. dad. No, I call him daddy. Okay, He's moving on. Daddy. Question eight. <laughs> ew, ew, ew. I don't even oh. like that I joked about that. <laughs> daddy makes me sick. Anyone, if you call okay. your dad daddy, oh. I'm sorry for your childhood. Yeah. Oh, my. Uh, okay. Um, favorite, or maybe I'm uh, jealous of it. You had a pony growing up. <laughs> You have to say, Daddy, thank you. Daddy, I want a pony. You have to say that to get a pony. No, you have to I call know. your dad, Daddy, already. Okay, oh, next God. question. I'm sorry. Question, no, it's fine. Question eight. What is your favorite movie quote for $800? Oh, my God. Um, my favorite movie quote. Can I give my favorite um, TV quote, the one that's coming to mind? Oh, my God. I thought you were going to say that. Like, Can I give my favorite slam poetry title? I was about to be like, and zoom over. Wait, my, f- <laughs> my favorite. <laughs> yeah, I just. Can I please sing my favorite ballad from Pocahontas on ice? It's, it's, it's one they only took out on that Nikki, tour. the internet's breaking up. Um, yeah. Uh, um, okay, oh. my favorite movie line. Let yeah. me really think about this for a second. I mean, like, some that are occurring to me because I like my favorite movies are like Dead Poet Society. So I'm thinking Love. like, oh, Captain, my Captain. Like what other mo- s- s- lines in that movie are really yeah. touching or moving? Yeah. Um, can't hardly wait. There's some great lines in that that are so just good. like crushing and really yep. good. Yep. Um, but I really, I got to go liar, liar, where he goes, you're a pod- pedantic, pontificating, prudentious snob, a belligerent something, a worthless ste- steaming pile of cow dung, figuratively speaking. And he says that, that that's my favorite line. You're a pedantic, pontificating, pretentious something. A worthless, steaming. Yeah, he does that whole rendition. We'll that's edit it in post. $800 no, to Nikki fuck. Glaser in the bank. I that's I got it right. That is that's one of, fun. yeah, you'll look that up tonight. That's one of the better lines from that movie that is full of memory. I wish quotes. I was ready for that. Yeah, yeah, that one was so, oh, God, that movie's so goddamn good. I mean, it's one of those movies that you go, you know, you always hear about the casting all options they had waiting in the wings or things that didn't happen because somebody got you yeah. know, was shooting like Harrison Ford was shooting, you know, fucking uh, Hollywood homicide with Josh Hartnett. So he couldn't do Batman, you know, like something. Oh, right, right, right. You know, and so now that's why everyone hates Josh Hartnett, you know, because he held Ford out of Batman. That's not. Whoa, that's that's not it. But that's how rumors get started. But shit like that. Ooh, you hear about track. Yeah. Adam Ray over Josh here. Hartnett got turned down for Batman and they gave it to Harrison Ford. So he goes, you know what? I'm going to fucking tell them to schedule a Hollywood homicide when uh, Tim Burton wants to. Oh, shit. That didn't happen. Uh, Well, that would be amazing if Harrison Ford stood up for Josh Hartnett. (laughs) By the way, he, I hope Josh Hartnett's checking in with us. Whoa. Where is he? I mean, dude, that guy went 40 days and 40 nights. He was so fucking hot, dude. I can't even believe I got to look him up again. I was horny for him <laughs> so much in high school and I never masturbated in high school. Like I wasted all this horned up energy on these guys. I was in love with all of these guys. Josh Hartnett, I was truly like obsessed and in love with him. I got to go back. I bet he'll look too young now. No, he was like older no, when I was young. He looked young too. I bet he's like, even no, out. he he was like a man. Like I, there was that one movie he did 40 days and 40 nights. That's one yeah. he like, he didn't really do much after that. Yeah. 
What else was he in? Scream? Was he in one of the screams? No, see? And the fact that you think that and he was like, not, what? maybe he I only did so Hollywood hot. Homicide in 40 Days and 40 Nights. Yeah. No, he had to, he did something before that that broke him. He's like, I'm quitting acting for Lent. This movie just really touched me. I wonder what happened to him. I'm worried about him <laughs> truly. What if, him to- K- what if he's running K-Fed, KFED's fan page? <laughs> <laughs> what if they're the same? I person? knew they were connected. Well, that oh is God. the rumor that we all want to be. Dude, true. that would be amazing oh. because they kind of did disappear around the same time and come. I think I, I think it lines up, dude. Oh my God! I mean, you know, we all want Tupac to actually still be living, but if somehow K. Fed and Josh Hartnett were the same, were the same back, person? Whoa. Peel it back. So um, is that answer right? That's correct. For nine hundred dollars, that is correct. <laughs> no, for eight hundred dollars, that was correct. After all that, all right. For nine hundred dollars, your favorite food in quarantine? What have you been uh, snacking on? This? Oh, that's a good. Days? I'm a vegan, so I gotta say my favorite food. Um, God, my my diet is so fucking boring. I like. Honestly, this is a pretty sad one. I like um. Oh, God, halo top. Like when I get to dig into a halo, like there's these halo tops that are uh, like low sugar and vegan, you know, cool. where you can eat the whole pint of ice cream. Yep. I'm going to go have one after this. So that's kind of all I can think about right now. Do you, do you ever do those? Do you do pints of ice cream ever? You know, I'm more of a salty guy. I, the last pint of ice cream I did was probably when I was super baked in college, honestly. Really? Um, oh, yeah. So you just I, don't like sweets? No, I do. I I mean, what do you go for? Ice cream sandwiches are killer. That I I'll oh yeah, that's delicious. Yeah, um, but uh, what have you been eating a lot of? You know, I'm a big like chips and salsa guy. Is that yeah. weird? I just Good. like that's, but that's not my. Um, I've been eating a lot of hummus, but I yeah. always eat a lot of hummus. Oh, hummus I love and it. a lot of um, uh, peppers. I didn't realize how fucking delicious just straight up green and red peppers were. Oh my! Oh, green aren't my favorite, but red and yellow and orange. Oh, I you could eat those Slide like an apple. That through a thing of hummus, like oh, it's delicious. Dude, that's better, dude. That's if jo- if I if you saw Josh Hartnett do that, like I don't even know. I would explode. Yeah, that's what I'm saying, and that's correct. That is the answer for number. Thank question you so number much. Nine. If you saw Josh Hartnett scooping up some hum with a pep, would you lose it? Yes. $900 yes, I would. Nine hundred in the bank for Nikki Glazer. Question ten. The final question. Um. Is get it okay? Has in this quarantine, um, have you enjoyed the most getting thoughtful about how much perspective is actually needed to uh live a full life, uh, getting closer to your loved ones, uh, or um, finding out new pages to follow on Instagram? Um, I would say getting closer to my loved ones, final answer. (sighs) Boy, that was close. A lot of people say a lot of people say Instagram, and that is incorrect. You are correct. The best thing about it is getting close to your loved ones. Oh my God! Yes, Nikki Glazer, a solid ten for Thank ten. Thank you so much. Thousand bucks to the uh, K Fed um, nanny uh, school. Where are we donating to? Um, let's donate it to um, like the what's the Feed America? Aren't they doing a lot of good stuff right now? Feed America. Feed America. They're just getting um foot. Pictures out to the frontline workers, the ones. Al Gadot that started them. that. Yeah. <laughs> She's like, I gotta fucking make up for this imagined shit. Oh man. my I god, that would be amazing. If All she... the celebs get their feet. Just feet for freedom. Yeah, that's really good. <laughs> feet for feet. Um, feet on the front lines. Um, footwork to okay. get. Yes. So anyway, um, feed, feed America, I think, is the feed. one. Feed. Okay, great. F-E-E-G. Sorry, I definitely didn't hear that. But that's, uh, that makes a lot more sense, and I have heard of that. But you can uh, see my content on feedamerica.com <laughs> slash Nikki Glazer. Uh, I that do have a profile, profile up, and I have a solid rating. <laughs> There's ratings. Why wouldn't it's there be? It's just women that are putting their feet on the American flag. and it's So if you love America and feet, feedamerica.com. By the way, you're not joking about that. That's combining a lot of people's two favorite things. Patriotism and fucking podiatry. Yep. Yep. I'm just like, I have, I don't use a bunion splint, but to like to make my (laughs) toes go the right way, I put a gun in beneath between my two. um, Oh yeah. My big toe. And yeah. And, and then I just, uh, yeah. Then I just jerk off the gun with my feet. 
I mean, honestly, that would get so many people going. All the views. All the views. And it would feel really good for my feet. Like, I should be doing – that's probably a good exercise to do for my bunions. Yes. I'll I'll look into it. Feedamerica.com. Love it. Um, Well, I will uh, PayPal or Venmo that to you, and then you can take care of it however you you wish. Really? Thank you, Adam. Of course, yeah. And thanks for doing this. You're, yeah, thank uh, you. That's so nice. It's been fun to watch all the things you uh, have stayed active on tube and uh, and online wise. And also, great timing for. I mean, your special dropped when banging on Netflix. Uh, last October. Last October. I mean, we're not that far away from that. So no, I mean, it was nice to have it out there right now. Right, like you've got to be getting flooded with. Um, people. Yeah, more people or- are seeing it again for sure. The algorithm has been good to me. That's awesome. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for having me. This was Good so to see fun. You. I'm yeah, glad you too. You're, you're doing well. Crush on Conan. And I'll talk to thank you. Thank you. Okay. Bye, Nikki. Bye, Adam.